Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. We have a couple of champions from the past weekend to discuss, namely the new DTM champion and the British Touring Car champion. But we also have the prestigious Bathurst 1000 on the calendar and of course World Rallycross from Belgium. So with all that to dig into, may I remind you to subscribe. And with that, let's start with the Bathurst 1000 from the Supercars of Australia. The Bathurst 1000 started with a multi-car incident just after the first corner that involved a returning Jamie Winkup and damaged several others. Not the start Winkup wanted on his return. Straight after the restart, there was another crash. At this rate, it'll be lucky if anyone crosses the finish line. With a partly wet track, there was always going to be incidents. Five safety cars within the first 40 laps though. Me thinks a few Fosters were had before the race start. I'm not going to go through the whole race because we'll be here all day. Shane Van Gisbergen dominated the race. There was a late safety car and Chaz Mostert gave him a little trouble for a few laps. But in the end, it's another SVG win. He is just an incredible driver. A record breaking driver. Garth Tander wins his fifth Bathurst 1000 as well, which is pretty good. And also, importantly, this is the last time we'll see Holden's in the Bathurst 1000. A magnificent way to end the Holden brand. The most successful Bathurst brand. It will take Ford a long time to even catch up. So, another win for SVG and a very happy goodbye to Holden. SVG is basically guaranteed the Supercars Championship. There's only a few races left in 2022. The final round of the British Touring Cars from Brands Hatch and we got a safety car early for the stricken Cupra of Aaron Taylor-Smith, then another for the Cupra of Carl Bordley. There was some good racing between Jake Hill and Ash Sutton, but it was Tom Ingram who won the race with the four title contenders all in the top five. Race two was a much cleaner race with little overtaking at the front. Ash Sutton and Turkington made contact, then in the second half of the race Hill passed Butcher and Turkington passed Sutton and the Beamers were starting to charge. But they couldn't pass Ingram who won again and had maximum points from the first two races. Turkington got third but was out of the title chase. So one race left and it was between Hill, Ingram and Sutton. Race three and Daniel Rowbottom spun and nearly took out half the field. Bobby Thompson and Rick Parfit were also out and we got a safety car. Ash Sutton needed as many cars between him and Ingram as possible but instead he lost the place to Butcher. Things got even better for Ingram when Morgan and Kamish made contact and fell behind the Hyundai. Going on to the last lap, Hill tried to go around the outside of Sutton but was run out wide. Ingram was right behind Sutton and is your new champion. Not the end of the drama as there was a Vauxhall upside down and Dan Lloyd won the race meaning Hyundai won all three brands races. This was a good BTCC weekend, action, drama and some very tense racing. My last word on the 2022 championship will be about Jason Plato. This was his last race and he scored no points all weekend. At the start of the year I asked if he could get to 100 wins. That couldn't have been further from what happened in 2022. Plato ended his career 17th overall. He's only had one worst year in British touring cars. A sad way to end one hell of a career, but he has accomplished plenty over the years. BTCC is done for 2022 and I'm looking forward to 2023. It will be the first year since 1990 that neither Matt Neal or Jason Plato will be taking part in the BTCC, unless either of them make a surprise return. The final round of the 2022 DTM Championship came to us from the Hockenheim Ring in Germany and most of the field could win the championship. Sheldon van der Linde had the advantage going in and there were a lot of crashes in this one, with Arjun Maney the first victim in his Mercedes. Kelvin van der Linde then lost a tyre after contact. The safety car came out and this led to our next big crash with the Lamborghini of Rolf Einiken completely destroyed in an incident involving multiple cars. Then the biggest crash yet, multiple cars at high speed, fire and a red flag. Luckily everyone was okay. David Schumacher and Thomas Preining were the cars that started the incident. Their cars looked wrecked, but it was Dennis Olsen in the Porsche who burst into flames and as I said everyone was okay. A much diminished field continued after the restart and some good on track action saw Sheldon van der Linde pass Rast. 
The final result saw Lucas Aura win from Sheldon van der Linde. Mirko Bortolotti and René Rast can be champion, but it is really between Sheldon van der Linde and Lucas Aura. Just two points separate them with one race left. The final race was very lacking in cars and therefore excitement. Although so many were damaged on the Saturday, you'll forgive the teams for not having the time to rebuild them. There were a few incidents, but Sheldon van der Linde made easy work of the lack of vehicles on track to take third and his first DTM Championship win. Marco Whitman won the race from Rene Rast, whilst Lucas Auer laboured to a seventh place. Marco Whitman's win is his first since Assen last year, but it was all about South Africa's first DTM champion. Sheldon van der Linde in his BMW did a good job to get the results that mattered at Hockenheim, and hopefully he'll be defending the title in 2023. Chaos at the start of the first World Rallycross round from Spa, Belgium. Clara Anderson made contact with everyone else off the start. Bergstrom and Munich were out and Timmy Hansen spun. Hansen couldn't charge down Anderson and she took her first semi-win, pending investigation. The second semi wasn't as fun but it was very close. In the end, Nicholas Gronholm took it and Kevin Hansen just stole second place from Christofferson. So the final and Clara Anderson was disqualified. So we had the Hansen brothers lining up against Gronholm, Christofferson and Bergstrom. Gronholm's heroics were ended when Timmy Hansen was spun and they collided. This left Johan Christofferson to take another win. A bit too easy. Day 2 was always going to struggle to match that but they gave it a good try. Timmy Hansen spun and was knocked out in semi-final number 1. But semi-final 2 and the final itself were dominated by Johan Christofferson who did the double at Spa and has a huge lead in the championship. And that was all the action from the past weekend. Another great weekend in motorsport history and a fantastic end to the DTM and BTCC for 2022. What was your race of the weekend? Probably the first DTM race for sheer chaos reasons. Next week we have the final European Le Mans round, Euro Formula and Formula Regional European. So probably no roundup because there will be absolutely nothing to say. The five drivers in Euro Formula are very unlikely to put on much of a show. So remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and have a good one.